Okay, welcome, welcome to the Aramir Roundtable. Today is the 25th of June, 2020. Um, I have a special guest, uh, Dave Thomas. Now, Dave, you and I have known each other for quite a quite a few years. Uh, yeah, since two, and, um, since 2008. Yeah, it's uh, what that 12 years now. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it's nice to have you on as a a, a guest, a presenter, and um, I know we've been hearing about the Dream uh, Lifter trade and, and trading group one and. Now the uh, the curtain is going to be revealed. So, well, you know, like you said, I've been I, I had my flight plan uh, filed for a long time, but you know, didn't didn't quite get clearance or uh, uh, what, what's the appropriate term? Uh, filed, I guess. Yeah, you you filed the flight plan and uh, you've got clearance now, so you're ready to taxi and take off. So. There, we, there we go. There we go. Keep keep it all in the uh, uh, the uh, the air airline lingo, I guess. Right. <laughs> Okay, so we, uh, we're excited, and um, I'll mute myself, just, but I'll be here, so if there's no background noise, it'll interrupt or anything. Um, okay, but, and, and my screen shared and all that stuff, we got the disclosure up there? Yeah, so just a normal disclosure, the Air is not a broker, dealer, or investment advisor. It's for educational purposes only. Options, features, and currencies involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. Best performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. If you want to read the whole thing, just pause the recording or go to the bottom of any of our web pages. So with that, Dave, uh, you're off and running, and uh, yeah, we look forward to it. It looks uh, it's pretty exciting. Well, good. Well, thanks, Tom. I appreciate the opportunity. I know we've uh, we chatted about this uh, just a short time ago, and um, you know, like I said, we've you know um, we wanted to get something going here, but uh, you know, wanted to kind of strange times that we're kind of going through right now with all the coronavirus and all that stuff. So that's you know provided some you know kind of a crazy time for for anybody in the investment world. So. Um, so I figured, Hey, it's, it's, it's time. And so, um, we'll just, might as well just jump right in. Right. So, uh, just a bit about me, um, as Tom mentioned just before, and, you know, my first, uh, introduction to options was, was with Tom. It was a bit back in mid 2008, a uh, phone call to Tom. And cause I'd heard about options trading from a friend of mine, actually that lives, just lives down uh, my street here. And he, um, I said, hey, did you hear about this uh, Sheridan mentoring and options or whatever? So I did some research and ended up with a phone call to Tom back in 2008. And at that time, just getting on a list, you know, to, to be, uh, you know, part of the mentoring program at Sheridan. And, um, and as it turned out, uh, when the, the, the uh, Dan Harvey ended up being one of the folks there that was doing uh, mentoring uh, for Dan. And so... Uh, as it ended up early, very uh, early 2009, started mentoring with Dan and started trading, you know, butterflies for, for a few years after that. And I think soon after that, I was at a, a Dan Sheridan reunion uh, in Chicago, which he has these kind of annual things. And, you know, the thing that everybody that's even listening in today, I mean, everybody knows this is a pretty small community, uh, you know, uh, I mean, here's Tom and I, you know, uh, you know, we've, we've known each other for 12 years and, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know, you know, when you run into people like, you know, it wasn't I ran into this guy that was up on stage and he was doing a presentation. It was this guy, John Locke, never heard of him before. And, you know, so it was like, OK, I did some early mentoring with Dan Harvey. Yeah, I kind of related to this kind of like I was in, you know, kind of undergraduate school. Um, and then I listened to kind of some, some of the things that John Locke was doing. And just like with anything else, you know, wanted to get further education. So it was like, okay, um, you know, Dan wasn't doing, you know, mentoring in that mode anymore. So it was like, okay, well, let's, uh, let's see what John has to say. And I started mentoring with him around 2011. And then about four years later, um, after doing mentoring with John and doing trading and being successful with that, John asked me to, uh, he was getting very, very busy with mentoring. So he asked if I would come on to help him uh, mentor students, which I did. Um, and been doing that for about the past five years up until just a few months ago. Um, and basically taught somewhere over around 100 students in the past five years from all over the world, uh, literally, um, which was, to me, was a, a, a tremendous fun. And because it provided an opportunity to be able to, you know, pass on things that I had learned. And um, it was a nice way to be able to connect with people. And it really brought me to a... Um, a better understanding because I was, you know, I always view myself as a student here. I am, you know, kind of, you know, telling people about something here today and, and making myself available as a, as a teacher and also as for this trade alert service that we're starting here today. 
Um, but I always consider myself just a continuing student. Every day I'm continuing to learn. And as I learn, I'm continuing to try to bring that knowledge of what I learn on a daily basis to people. I did it through mentoring. And as a matter of fact, uh, you know, even with now, you know, I said here, another phone call with Tom very recently. Now he's with Aramir. Used to be Capital Discussions. Um, and one thing I forgot to ask you, Tom, was when did Capital Discussions actually start? I was curious about that. Well, maybe Tom. Oh, sorry, I had uh, myself muted. It was yeah, April 2014. Okay, so 2014. Okay, so, and that was, and for anybody that didn't know at Capital Discussions at that time, it was basically, you know, a lot of people that were uh, kind of with Sheridan Mentoring that, you know, kind of want to go off and have kind of an independent uh, place where people could just gather. Uh, people chat and talk and discuss, you know, different trading uh, disciplines and ideas and all that kind of stuff. And then recently, I know, was it just a year or so ago, Tom, you changed the name and, and kind of uh, over to Aramir. And, and now... Yeah. Uh, it was uh, January of 2018. Yeah, okay, so a couple of, a couple of years ago. And um, so, so here we are. So it's kind of a, uh, um, you know, that's the, 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 tw the, the 12 years in a capsule view there for everybody who, who doesn't know me. Um, the one thing that happened, and it, as Tom said, as Aramir started in January of 2018, uh, February of 2018 is, is kind of like where the whole uh, rationale for doing what I'm doing now actually materialized because as everyone knows, yeah, you know, we had a market that just seemed to be relentlessly going up through the fall of 2017. And then early 2018, all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, the first week of February, all of a sudden, everything just, you know, went to heck very quickly. And, you know, people ended up getting, you know, hurt fairly uh, badly, depending upon their trading positions and whatever. And I took that to figure out, okay, as any, uh, I'm, for, I'm, you know, my background education is an uh, engineer. Uh, so I took that to heart and said, okay, how can I kind of re-engineer or reimagine, you know, trades that I had been doing for many, many years to, to see that, you know, as times are new and you know, we have to be adaptable to, well, we have to adapt our trading to the current market conditions. And we've had to continually do that. You can't just take a, a box trade and just put it on and you can, but you, know, you only get certain kinds of results. Um, I've tried to look at that and say, okay, we all start from something. And even with today, you know, uh, here is something that I went, I had an idea of, okay, how do we try to mitigate what happened in the early part of 2018? And I was doing this and then I, I think my next slide here is, yeah. So here's a picture out of my, uh, in my backyard uh, kind of looking up to the sky and all of a sudden I see a big plane flying over. Well, as it turns out, I live in the Seattle area and, you know, this is a plane going over, but it was a strange kind of, it was kind of a 747. You can't really maybe see that from the plane unless people really kind of zoom in on it. But I didn't realize that, and I was in the midst of doing all this back testing on kind of these theories about I had as far as a new trade. And <clears throat> I, I found out that this trade, that plane is actually this plane. It's a uh, it's a plane that's made by Boeing a long time ago. It's it's not a it's not a, a new plane. They made it many years ago, back in the I think around 2007 2008 time frame. And I just happened to have the name Dreamlifter, um, and I thought that was kind of a cool thing, just from the standpoint of, you know, I saw this plane flying over, which unfortunately you know flies fairly low and loud over my house. It's a modified 747 400, um, and it's basically to transport parts. Uh, from one of the locations of Boeing plants to another location all around the world. And I just thought from my perspective, I thought it was a cool name in the sense of it's a, um, you know, we, we all have our dreams that we're trying to kind of lift up to maybe through options trading. Um, but it's, it's a, you know, there could be many things that people could kind of read into that. Um, but for me, it was just kind of like, huh, that's kind of interesting. I think I was out in my backyard, I think with my grandson, you know, it kind of just, picking blueberries or something on a nice summer day. And, you know, we look up the sky and here's this big plane going over. I said, hmm, I've been looking for a name for this trade. And well, maybe that is, there's a good one here. So, um, so anyway, so here, so here we are. So that's kind of how the name got created. No, no, nothing original uh, kind of, uh, but it was, you know, it's got multiple, multiple kind of reasons behind it. So, but 
apart from that, you may say, okay, well, fine, Dave, you know, what, what's this all about? What a, what a, as I, I take a terminology that I saw from some of these latest things that I was uh, listening to um, that I'd heard, especially of the thing that we've been living through for the past months of the coronavirus is like, everyone wants to know what, they wanna know the facts, you know, what's really happening out there? So I said, well, okay, we wanna know the facts about what this whole Dreamlifter is about. So, okay, so what, what are the facts? It, when I looked at it, I said, okay, I gotta be smarter and reimagining a new kind of trade design. Um, you know, how can we be smarter and more successful than we had been before? And I said, you know, kind of learning from the recent, you know, the coronavirus, which we're all living through right now. And, you know, it's, it's going through, you know, maybe the still the, the, the first wave now, or maybe, and so it's some, something in kind of a continuous thing, but, you know, we're all trying to learn. We're all trying to reimagine, you know, this new normal. And, you know, I look at it and said, you know, as far as my trading, trading will bounce back, you know, but probably differently than before, you know, just like our life will probably, you know, until there's a you know vaccine or something like that, it will be different. And I think everyone here probably knows that because we've been living a different life, you know, for, for some months now. And I look at this as I was, I was showing this to my son yesterday, who's also, you know, a trader. I said, you know, this, this is more like a football, not a basketball. You know, we've got to be ready for all kinds of bounces. You know, basketball is pretty easy. You know, it's, the bounces are pretty predictable. Football, well, you never quite know. It's not to, it's, it's, it bounces all over the place. So you've got to be ready. And so that's my point of saying, how can we be smarter about this? And the uh, point is that, hey, you know, just like anything that we see, you know, the government, our government can affect the economy which can have a direct effect on our trading opportunities. And we have to be smart. You know, um, uh, one word about just like the other day, oh, the, the, the a trade deal is on, it's off, it's changed. Um, something changes, a, a vaccine is available. All those things are making this trading um, environment that we're living in much different than before. And it seems like those are having more and more of an effect on us. So, but it, when you take a look at that, said, in my opinion, now is the time to trade, in my opinion, while the volatility is still in a higher than normal range, it's nowhere near it was back in, you know, kind of the February, March time frame when this whole thing got, all the, you know, many communities were shut down and locked down and all that stuff. But we're nowhere near where the, where the volatility was, you know, back in January. We're still significantly above that. What does that do for us? It provides us the cost of our butterflies that we're putting on is much less capital than normal, literally almost half. You know, these trades, you know, you can trade it anywhere between about 20, 25K in capital. The trades that I got on right now, only trading about 10K. So, which is pretty, pretty crazy, but that, that's the, that's the uh, environment that we're living in right now. And, you know, the key thing is that for everybody, you know, here today, and we'll listen to on recordings and, and after, you know, it is completely okay to simply, you know, watch, to learn, to paper trade, trade smaller than average, you know, it's up to you, the individual options trader. You don't have to do, you know, what um, the size of the trades that I'm doing. Uh, these are only, you know, I put these on as an examples of what I've done and especially with, you know, back testing um, and also live testing as well. So, you know, you need to decide what is good for you and stick with it. Um, this is something that's, you know, critical. You have to be, you know, comfortable with whatever you're doing. You could put a trade on for a couple thousand dollars uh, you could put a trade on for 10 times that amount, but that's, you know, the trades work with either, but that's completely up to you. So when I looked at the trade design, you know, one thing I looked at, you know, when I tried to use some analogies to this uh, kind of this uh, uh, dream lifter uh, airplane, you know, what did Boeing use? They used old 747, actually I found out it was 747 400s that they had basically had that little upper top to it that were basically ready for the scrap heap. Um, and they took a, a fantastic, one of the most successful airplanes that was built uh, commercially, you know, and they repurposed it for a different need. You know, they needed to be able to fly parts around. You know, we're trying to, I'm trying to take a look at a, a trade that trades are that I had been using for many, many years, uh, all kinds of different kind of butterflies, condors, spreads, you know, whatever it is, and saying, okay, can I repurpose it? Can I make it different for now more highly volatile times? And uh, can I make it? Not so much that it's totally more versatile, uh, but that it has a very distinct purpose. The purpose is to be able to have it work for these new kind of environments. And so I said, you know, the, the Dreamlifter was introduced around 2008. Uh, kind of funny, that was a similar time that I started looking into options trade in my first phone call to Tom. So what are the things that I wanted to try to do with this uh, trade? I wanted to try to achieve, I wanted to achieve above average returns, high win rates, 
didn't want to have a, I want to have the ability to just have a minimal cash requirement. Uh, easy to trade, in my viewpoint, that means only checking in once per day. This is not day trading. This is not, this is something that I've, you know, delta neutral type style trading that I've learned over the past 12 years. And most of the trades that I've learned, you know, from various folks, which I mentioned before, um, you can have trades that you have to be on top of all the time. But the ones that I tended to lean on were the ones that I really didn't want to have this take over my life. I didn't want to be chained to my desk. It's, you know, I just wanted to be able to come in and do it, you know, one check in per day. That's it. And the biggest thing, I wanted to handle large down markets like February 2018 and also now this year. So suffice to say, that's kind of the quick background. I'll show you some back test results that I went back and took that design, went back to 2011, did the work, which took a long time to do. It was, there was multiple iterations of the back testing that I had done, depending upon different uh, results that I had got to basically not try to customize it to different time frames, but um, and not, you know, um, try to, you know, keep just, oh, this month didn't work. Okay, let's make a change. And now, okay, that month works now, just move on. This is something where I had an initial concept <clears throat> and then see, I went through the entire nine years and figured out, okay, what does work? And does it work to my satisfaction? If it didn't, I made some tweaks, went back and retreated the whole nine years. And if that needed more tweaking, did that and re-went and did the whole nine years again. So there was... Multi, this, this took literally uh, you know, more than a year to go through while of obviously still you know, doing my normal trading. So this was happening in the background. Um, if you looked at the, the actual results, because people like to look at results, here's the facts. Um, if you take a look at 2011 through 2020, you can see the capital growth term, uh, capital growth curve here. Key thing is if you take a look at that average, um, it's about, if you take a look at over the course of averaging over those nine years, it's about 32% average gain per year. And that's using $25,000 as, as a capital base to be able to do these trades. Um, currently, I <clears throat> have the ability to be able to trade less than that. Usually I use, usually do about 20,000 uh, per, per trade for right now. Although right now it's kind of crazy. We only have to use about 10,000. But if you only have it, if you could use the 20,000 in the market that existed, let's say back in January, you have the ability to grow that growth rate anywhere from about 32 to 40 percent. Um, if you're using, you know, it's just a, it's just an equation. I mean, if you're 32 percent, if you're using 25k, if you do the math, 40 uh, percent is what it turns out. If you're only using 20k, so you can see how it works out. If you take a look in the over on the right hand side, it gives you some very interesting facts, which I know people like, would like to see. And this is really critical in trade design. If you take a look at the winners and the losers, the first kind of green and red kind of kind of can or bars there, you can see that there was a 106 winners. The losers were 28. Uh, so that's about a 79% win rate, about a 21% loss rate. And from anybody that I had learned from over the years, usually in trade design, if you can get something that's about 80-20, that's you know, kind of like a sweet spot. It means that you're, you're getting a, a good return, um, but you're not taking on either too much or too little risk. It just tends to be the, the sweet spot. If you take a look at the, the average winnings for these trades, you see the number there on the th kind of the third line down, uh, $957.94 was the average winner, um, but also the average loser was almost, almost identical, $948.25. So winners and losers, very, very similar, very, very similar. Um, if you take a look at the largest win, it was about $4,170, $4,170. And the largest loser was just above max loss, $2,819. Our max loss on this is 10% of $25,000, which would, should be $2,500. But as you would know, there are times when all of a sudden you'll be going through and there'll be trades where, uh, you know, all of a sudden you turn on my, my process and this was that in my back testing was that you turn it on at 1230 Pacific time and you got what you got at that time. Um, so, you know, if, if you have a day where a trade where it had a bit more, well, then you got to have a little bit more. So, but that's what it was. Average days in trade, winners about 24 days, losers about 29 days. I, stay, I say that this is approximately about a 30-day trade. The other thing on winners and losers is you can see the number there on the win side is 13 maximum consecutive winners. Uh, so there basically was a time during this, 
the from 2011 to 2020, uh, where there were 13. There was a time where I had 13 trades in a row where they were winners, but there was also the the worst time that there were four trades in a row that were losers. So that's also important to know. And and the maximum drawdown on this, you can see down there was a little bit over three thousand dollars at any one time. So, you know, from a standpoint of, and that's for a twenty-five thousand dollar trade, which we have a defined uh, uh, risk in this trade. Um, and but we we take uh, at ten percent is a per, our prescribed number that we go and try to take it off at. If you take a look at the actual year to year, these are the trades actual year from twenty eleven to twenty nineteen. Um, the number of wins and losses you can see in the first three years where I did a total of 12 per year. So it was truly a 30 day trade, one per 30 day time period. The difference is, is that once 2014 started is the weekly options started to play in at that point. And I started to utilize those um, in the back testing because I could and I wanted to utilize those because I wanted to, to try to kind of a baseball terminology. I wanted to try to get more so, you know, more times at the plate. I wanted to get more more bats. And so, as you can see, as the years moved on from 2014, there was like 13 trades for that year. Next trade, 15. 2016, there was 15 trades. 2017, there were 17 trades. 2018, 15 trades. And 2019, there was 15 trades. Some of that is determined because of what the market will give us. And I'll show you later in, a, in, a, uh, in, a, in an actual example of, of how that actually worked. And if you figure out the gains here like that, if you add all those up together over nine years, that does compute to 32% a year. So there we go. A um, couple of quick summary here, 32% um, over the for uh, 25K. Like I said, you can get up a little bit more, but of course there's more risk and more work involved if you use this method. So there's, uh, uh, that that is always the case. So I say, Dave, all right. there's, a, there's a quick question. Uh, was every trade the same amount or did you scale it up? Every trade was the same amount. They were all 25K. Okay, I thought so. I just wanted to clarify. Thanks. Yep, and, uh, and I'll show you like right here. It's like, uh, but thanks, Tom. And, and please, Tom, as you get questions, because I'm not looking at the questions, if you could just, you know, interject at any time, that'd be great. And, and don't wait to the end. Interject any time. Will do. Thanks. So trade here is, you know, it's a broken wing butterfly style trade that is designed to work well in, you know, basically all markets, you know, neutral and uptrending markets primarily, but trying to hold its own in down markets, okay? It's not made to uh, make money, let's say, in down markets, but it's trying to hold its own in down markets. We did it, uh, I did it in the rut. I used the uh, ONE analytical software. I did not use option view. Uh, the initial entry configuration is um, a 60-40, Okay, 60 point wing on the top side, 40 on the on the down. I'm sorry, 60 on the downside, 40 on the upside. But that can that can change. It could be, and that is all. When I say initial, that's to just check. But you got to check what the deltas are. You got to check various configurations. Okay, uh, and we'll get into that more later. Uh, example size here is I did it with a, a 10 contracts, which was 25k. Trade duration is basically it's up to up to about 30 days. Um, checked it once a day. Uh, a, one big difference here is that one of my filters, as Tom had uh, kind of talked about earlier a little bit, was that I'm using uh, two different set, two set, two different uh, rule sets, and one of these is for the market, and I use the VIX Central, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, basically, when they're in either contango or backwardation uh, market conditions. And those was that this particular was for me was a filter of when to do certain things in this trade. Okay. And as with any trade, there's always some trader choice in this. Okay. Um, but I used for the least for the back testing purposes, I used a, a, a very specific rule set. Um, but suffice to say, it's basically when it goes in and out of contango. And if it's, I guess, out of contango, then it's called backwardation. Okay. Key part of this trade, which is a little unusual or different, is that I started this trade at around 80 DTE, okay? And I believe when I turn on the first new trade for this group, for the, for the service, I should say, um, next Monday, it's right around 80 DTE, it's around 80 DTE, okay? So I think the center was just to summarize, 10 contracts, 25K, profit target is about 10% or 2,500. Um, loss, I 10% loss, both. So it's, I got a 10% win, 10% loss. 
unless on a loss side, unless we get some significant drawdown that's abnormally because of some temporary pricing fluctuations. And usually that's due to a big down move, volatilities pop, and we get more than your average uh, loss. Typically I will go up to, I'll usually go up to maybe about 3,500 if that is that, if that's the case, if it's, if it's due to that, not just, just to normal market conditions. Okay. So you say, okay, great. How did this trade do this year? Okay. Well, this year has been a tough year. Okay. Here's the various trades um, right through. Now remember 10% is the max loss on this trade. Okay. And the trades that I had on this year. Okay. The summary is that this year we're down about, it's about neutral to about down about 2%. Um, now compare that to what the market has done during those individual time periods. Uh, the market was down significantly more, you know, than that perspective. So, um, so I was happy in the sense that the trade was able to, given no change in the rules, uh, was able to, you know, survive through that time frame. Some some months, obviously, you can see, you know, down 11%. Some months up around 4%. And there were various things over, and that's going from basically from the end of January right, right to current. Um, I didn't get a chance actually to uh, put in one that literally I just uh, got out of today and that was actually a, a winning trade that I just, just got out of today. Um, so let's take a look at the first trade of 2020 that was affected, I'd say, by COVID. So without further ado, here's the, this trade here, this was uh, uh, started, um, it was actually started uh, January, I believe January 31st. Um, for some reason, I couldn't get the <laughs> option at Explorer to go back to that date because when I did it, it was after the market had ended. So uh, they don't let you go in if it's after like, uh, you know, uh, after market close. So I had to go to the Monday just so people look say, well, gee, this is three days after starting. But so here we are. It was a basically started this trade. Uh, market was at about 1634 at the time. This is February 3rd. I got about at 1230. Um, and I put on, uh, say, right around 1590. In this particular case, there is some, uh, from my perspective, there's always a bit of, um, um, of, of change, whether you're putting it on exactly, uh, we got, I got certain rules to basically say exactly kind of how to, how to position this exactly, okay? But primarily trying to, you know, get the delta down to somewhere around neutral. And this particular trade, um, I'm not going to go through a lot of detail in this whole trade, but just to tell you that, you know, if you take a look, here's 27 days later, it hit max loss, okay? And it was at, and the reasons for taking this off was that it was at 50 DTE. So it, it started at 80, went to 50, so it was a 30-day trade. Um, the trade was down uh, basically a little bit over, a little bit over 10%. It was down, I guess, about 11%, 26, 24. Uh, and this was a loser. Um, could I have continued with this trade after 50? Sure. Uh, in real life, could you have done that? No. Uh, yes, for sure. But as part of my criteria, I put trades on, but if, at whatever it was on 50 DTE, I was taking it off. So you had to live and learn by that. So could this trade have done better? Possibly. But I, you know, that would, those are the rules I came up with. So, um, so, you know, you live and you live and die by that. So, the key thing to me is that it says, okay, fine. You take your loss. What do you do? Get right back in the saddle. Same day, went in. This, the next cycle here was at 78 days, May 15th at 78 days. I put on the trade. As you see, the delta here is a little bit over, just slightly positive, pretty flat. In this case, it's a, um, I think we got a 60-point wing on the bottom side and a 50 point wing on the top side. So you have to vary that top wing all depending upon just adjusting Delta, okay? Um, but what I'm gonna do on this one, I'm gonna go through slower so that actually people can see what actually happens and the various changes and when you need to do some adjustments on this. So take a look at the first day, boom, here's the rut down 44 points, okay? Pretty classical as to you know how things have been working. But the curious thing in this one is that take a look, We've got, if you, well, actually, let's go back. Well, yeah, if we go back and say, hey, if we went down 44 points on the start of this, okay, we should be losing money, as you can, as you can see by the kind of in the, um, I can't point to it here, but um, well, I guess I can do. I don't know if this, Tom, is this showing up on my screen, in the screen when I have my pointer going around like this? 
Uh, yeah, I can see your cursor. Oh, you can. Okay, I wasn't sure if that would work or not. Okay, so you can see on this one is is you know just to look at this you know kind of one day to the next. You can see down here, you know, the market went down 44 points. So we'd be down actually further than the, the graph shows, but you can see that we'd be down money. But if you take a look at the next day, here we are down 44 points and we're up money. We should have been down, you know, some, you know, probably four or $500. We actually up about $270. So you can see that the trade, you know, all depending upon volatility and market conditions, you know, sometimes the, you know, the software will not show you exactly what will happen because, you know, volatilities, uh, will change based upon what they come up with. We've seen this for years with various softwares, whether it be Option View, whether it be ONE, that sometimes you, you, know, you may not have um, an exact interpretation of what will happen for sure, especially if you get a large move quickly. The key thing is large move and quick. And so, so here we go. So the position is up money, the rut's down 44 points, and you know, we're okay at this. Um, but the thing is, is that per the rules okay if you take a look at this you say okay we're we're fine but in my terminology for we've got positive delta but in my rules because of the the particular situation that we're in that we're actually in backwardation um as if defined by you know you would take a look at vic central and it says that we're in backwardation so in that particular case i say okay i really don't want positive delta i want negative delta so we just make a simple uh, roll okay we just basically took some of our upper longs and uh, we just um, uh, rolled them up in this case so we just rolled them up to create some negative delta very simple very simple move uh, not unusual to anybody that, that has done any kind of broken wing you know butterflies you know road trip trades or whatever you know people call them you know different kinds of things I just basically I'm rolling my my longs up or down uh, very very easily and so I just you know did the roll there Okay, created the negative delta, and just and just moved on. Next day, our next adjustment. Okay, here we are. We're uh, up, and this is the case my delta. I would say is when we're in the backwardation mode, we have to do, we have to really look at this every day, and we're trying to keep our delta to a kind of a a pretty a, a much lower number. In this particular case, we're higher delta about minus 24, so we needed to bring that down. And I say we'd like to bring it down, you know, maybe by half or maybe a little bit more. So we do that and basically make a, another adjustment by adjusting the upper longs. And we bring the delta down to, well, in this case, just a little bit under 10. So fine, just kind of flattens it out. And then, and then, we, and then we move on, okay? So the next day, boom, down another 34 points. But in this particular case, oh, wait a minute, we're up $700, okay? Uh, approximately 700, this one is 772. Um, and that's even including, you know, commissions. Uh, so what I do is that one of the big changes in this trade and kind of the, what I made mentioned to before is that I'm trying to get more times up to bat because people, you know, many people would look at a trade like this. My gosh, Dave, it's, you got 73 days till expiration. Uh, we've got plenty of time left, which is true. Um, so it's like, why in the world would you go and take, you know, reduced profit now of, in this case, you know, around, you know, approximately around $700. Well, as part of my philosophy and my hypothesis for this trade is that uh, what I noticed was that there was many, many opportunities where it seems like the market, depending upon if the market was, you know, good to you one day, and if the combination of being good to you, meaning that you had some profit, because maybe this profit could absolutely just disappear the following day, um, that you don't have it. What I said is that, hey, if we, if it's there, and if we, I set a limit of about of about seven hundred dollars, and about if my next expiration cycle is around eighty five days, somewhere between seventy five to eighty five days. In this case, you can see the next expiration cycle is at eighty eighty seven, the May twenty ninth one. There, I said, okay, it's close enough. You know, this is not something where it's you know you have to be absolutely exact upon things. Uh, it's you know you got to put real life into this. Okay. So if you, if they, as Dan Harvey, you know, told me many years ago, if the gum, if the market gives you a gift, it's not a gift unless you take it. Well, here it is, and that has always been true to me, and I thank Dan for that for many years ago, um, uh, to mention that. And so I say, hey, let's let's utilize let's utilize that in this trade. So I said, okay, if that gives us the opportunity. Now remember when I went through the back testing, I didn't know if that process would work 
over the long period, over nine years. You could say, hey, this trade worked well. Okay, great, Dave, that's, that's fantastic. But you know, how about if you did this over nine years? If you use that same process over nine years, is that gonna, will it, will it really make out better for you than if you didn't do it? I found it did. And uh, the only way to really know it, like I say, look at the facts. Look at the back testing, look at the facts, look what I did, and that's the, that's the history, okay? So I took the reduced profit of uh, uh, $700. It's not the $2,500 I was looking for, but look at the trade. I was only in it five days, five days, okay? So what, did, what does that give you the ability to do? It gives me the ability to, I don't jump into the same expiration cycle. What I will do is that I will go and say, okay, as long as the next expiration cycle, like I said, is between 75 and 85 days, I will go and if I get this amount of money up, I will go and take it and jump into the next expiration cycle. And that's exactly what I did, okay? So I said, here, grab some profits, but also jump right back in. Don't, you know, don't stand by the sidelines, okay? You, know, you, you don't wanna be in the dugout. You wanna you know, get, get in the batter's box here. So I did, I jumped right back in and got into the next trade. As you can see, this one's at 87 days and started again, okay? Again, same thing holds true. If within the next you know, 12 days, if I get up to $700, I'll take it. And uh, when I say the next 12 days, because you know, I would need to, uh, well, actually it's a, sorry, it, it's the, um, I'm looking at the, uh, the next expiration cycle, as you can see is 108 days. And sometimes there go and there's a, another cycle that will come in there depending upon, but every, every month you, you have to look at that. So the length of time that you may stay in the trade might vary depending upon that. So. It's all based upon the next expiration cycle, not the one that I'm in. It's the next expiration cycle. So as long as the next one is between 75 and 85 or close to that, um, like this one was 87, so fine, I jumped in. So, so here we go. So then the question is here, uh, kind of a question for the group. Uh, I did this typically with a lot of people when I would uh, be uh, mentoring people and saying, okay, well, here we're in the trade. Now the question is, okay, so here's the question for the group. Do we do something here and why? And for that, I'm gonna take one quick drink of my coffee. So the question is, is, okay, do we do something? Well, like I said to you in the first trade, well, we're still in backwardation. We got positive Delta. So yes, we need to do something. Okay, so we need to have a little negative Delta. So we make a change and why? Because we are in backwardation. Okay, we're keeping to that rule and we wanna keep some negative Delta. So we make the change to the upper longs to, to, to create that, okay? Now the next day, as I say, oh my goodness, a rather large move, 127 points to the downside, okay? That's the market we're living in, okay? As you can see, as a matter of fact, if you look in the lower left-hand corner down here in the margin, look at the margin, it's only, it's under $10,000 for this trade. Normally, this should be between, you know, 20 to, and when I was using this in the back testing, it's right around 25,000. So you can see how cheap these butterflies are at this time because of volatility. But 127 points, <laughs> that's what you're gonna, that's what you, that's the world that we're living in right now, okay? So, okay, so big move. So we got positive Delta, so you know, what happens? Okay, make the adjustment, okay? Uh, and, and hang in there, okay? In this particular case, I say, okay, well, what do we do? Well, we're, if you take a look at the, the prior one, we actually took those upper longs and just, and just moved them up, okay? Um, and so, we, you know, we, we go from here. Now, in this particular case, um, we have a choice. Um, our butterflies at this point, uh, one thing that I, I like to do is, when we get to, as I would say, um, kind of equal butterflies here, um, it kind of gives the trader a choice. You could hang in here, you could continue to go, you could completely go and just um, uh, reposition the trade. These are some of the ones that during the in the alert service that you know we'll talk about uh, of the you know the, the the rationale for doing one reason or, or another. Okay, so that this will be part of the kind of the continued learning for everybody. Okay, um, in this particular case. I did not do anything here. And interestingly enough, we have another 90 point move to the downside. Now, take a look for a second. Look, look over here, we're down $1,700 here, okay? And all of a sudden, 
we've got a 90 point move and what happened to the P&L? We're only down $500, whereas before here, we're down 1700. This is what can happen with, with, with butterflies, okay? Uh, depending upon the times that we're in, some of the biggest value of these butterflies, you can work on the outside of the tent, okay, to the left, um, and they work very nicely. You know, these are, you know, this is what I had done in the back testing, and I saw this over the last two years while I've been preparing all this stuff and preparing for these kinds of moves. And sure enough, look what's happening. And this one is, you know, the, the one that I had done in March, okay? So again, here, time for action, okay? Uh, in this particular case, um, you absolutely need to do something and we actually go and take this and we reposition it, okay? It's just too far, too far to the left there. And we go and reposition it basically right back to, you know, kind of almost like starting position, okay? Then look, all of a sudden, boom, here we go. Another another big move down, okay? And we needed to go, and in this particular case, we need a negative delta because we're still in backwardation, okay? And we again, we have the choice. Do we go and just do something here, um, or do we go and actually reposition it? In this particular case, since we've got a equal butterfly and we wanna change that, we take it and completely reposition it, okay? Back to starting position. But as you can see, now, after all this, you know, crazy move, moving around, we're only down 100 bucks. So we've been able to be in this trade for 10 days and still hanging in there, okay? Here we go the next day. <laughs> uh, well, actually, it goes from March 13th, and now we go to March 18th. And in one day, here we are this day, now down another 126 points. Um, but in this particular case, now we're up almost $1,000, okay? so. Crazy how this market is going, and just this trade just seems to do really well when it comes to this area of the tent. Okay, um, but in this particular case, we want to make an adjustment because we we're just too far out here. Okay, and we want to get back inside the tent, so we do. We reposition it, but what I used said, okay, well, hey, you know, after a huge 126 down day, um, I'm looking to not go exactly to where. Uh, again, and this is trader choice. To, if you go exactly where the market was, um, as far as so many points below where the market is to position your your butterfly, I looked at and said, "Hey, you know, there is a little bit of flexibility here." Okay, and I said, "You know, where well, the trade's looking good the way it is, let's go and see how it go it goes in this particular case." And here we are. I could have taken it. I, I just left it here, and I could have taken the trade off here, but as I say, NBTR, but not by the rules. Uh, you know, in this particular case, we still have got, you know, 67 uh, days to go. Uh, the next uh, expiration cycle is at 88 days. So it's a little bit kind of beyond the, the, the time I'd want to go and take the profits in this one. Remember, we'd be looking for 700, we're already up at 3,200. Could I have taken it off here? Sure. Okay. Uh, by the rules? Uh, no, I, I, I couldn't. Okay. So we keep going. And go a few more days and sure enough, okay, so here we get to about 85 DTE on the next expiration cycle. We're down about 1700, so we lost about half of the profits. Uh, we're still above our 700, but we say, okay, let's take it and here's, here's where we are. So you can say, okay, well, great, that's 2020. Dave, how did we do if you took the same process and we moved back in early 2018? Well, here it was. Here's those same trades in early 2018. Here's how they did, and you know we were able to, um, you know, survive during that time frame. And so it was, it, you know, if you take a look at the trades that many many people had on, remember max loss in this trade is 10%. Okay, so we didn't even come near it. But during that time frame, if you go back to your trades and my trades in early 2018, people were in the first trade there from 110 to 27. People were getting two to three times max loss. So in this particular case, that'd be 20 to 30%, okay? So think about that, okay? 20 to 30%, I was able to get it down to about, down to 5%. Sure, it's not perfect, got it. Didn't try to get the trade to be perfect. I tried to get it so that I tried to mitigate the situation, but not get into a situation where I wanted to see how it worked over a course of nine years. Now quickly, over to VIX Central, because I know we want to leave some time here for questions. Uh, VIX Central, if you take a look at the time frame um, in Contango, this is what the, what the 
this is what it looks like. Here's the time frame and kind of the, the yellow area here. Uh, but right around here is basically when all the issues started to happen, okay? If you go to a little bit, if you zoom in on this, here's where, started, here's where things started to happen, okay? And these were indications of all of a sudden where when we start to slip into backwardation, you can see that it's a very, in this particular case, I thought a fairly good indicator, a good filter, if you want to call it, of when things would happen. And that's, and there are, like I said, there's, there's rules and more details that we'll all learn later on. Today, we're trying to just kind of hit the basics in a, in a quick time frame here. Um, and we'll just kind of, just kind of leave it there. And I guess, Tom, I'm going to open it up for questions and um, kind of go, go from there. Now, there was one comment while you were showing some of those trades that isn't it beyond the max loss of 10%. So just how often does that happen? They have a max loss, but uh, the trade moves, the market moves fast and you actually get out uh, with a worse uh, than 10% loss. Yeah, if you look, if you go back to that original slide where I showed the, the statistics, uh, let's see, let's see, how do I go back quickly to that? Um, let's see, hopefully we can do this, Tom. <laughs> Yeah, it's just PowerPoint, yep. Yeah, let me just go back to this, this slide here, okay? So, um, still sh still sharing okay, Tom? Yep. Okay, so to the question that came up is that the worst drawdown in the entire trade was $3,000 at any time within the trade when it happened. Um, the actual worst loss of this was 28.19, which in, tra in fact is above the 10%, okay? So, if you take a look at the um, you know, the max loss is 10 is 10%. But like I said, because of my back testing and only checking it once per day, uh, there were times that all of a sudden it would, it would have a problem and it would be above that. But the worst it ever got, like I said, the max drawdown at all was a little bit over 3000. Um, the actual worst on any trade, as it turned out was, was 28, it was 2819. Like I said, but if we had, um, even with volatility, the, the worst drawdown was just a little bit over 3,000. And a couple more questions. Uh, tell us mm -hmm. about the service. So I think you have a slide for that. Yeah, let's, uh, let's go to that. There we go. Yeah, so the, the service and um, basically it's a, um, it's a trade alert service and it's a, um, Tom, you might be able to better talk about this because you're the one that has more experience because you've had many people that have done this in the past. If you just maybe want to, do you want to talk about that briefly? About the service? Oh, sure. it's, a, it's the same as like, say the road trip that Dan Harvey and I did as far as uh, what you get with a service. It's uh, live trades. Uh, Dave and I, or Dan and I were using uh, live accounts and I think you're, you're also trading live. So yes, th there'll be live trades that you're actually doing in your own account. There will be. Um, They'll be sent out via email, SMS, uh, private Slack message. Um, there's discussion forums, a uh, place for you to upload trade images, send emails out, um, all the normal stuff that goes with any of the trade alert services that we have at Aramir. Um, but it'll be uh, Dave running it. So yes. it's, um, it's just like Amy did with her boxcar trade. It'll be 50% off the first month. So. Uh, I think it's uh it'll be one twenty nine a month, but then the first month will be half of that, so sixty four fifty I think. Um, and if you go to that airmir dot com slash dreamlifter, there's a a button there to uh, just if you're if you want to join, then uh, that's where you would go. If and um, and, and, and I guess the then what I'm planning on doing, uh, Tom, is uh like I said as I mentioned in the presentation, coming on Monday is right around about eighty days, so I will be putting on um, assuming everything is. Uh, meets the criteria. We'll look for Monday to to actually put the trade on, but um, you know that is uh, kind of the the liftoff. And what's the smallest amount of capital somebody could use to trade this? The smallest amount of capital um, that I've ever used and would say to people is about uh, two thousand uh, dollars. So which would be basically a one lot, okay? But coming with coming with that, okay, or you know two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars. Um, the key, the key thing around that is that the, as I, as I showed you in some of the adjustments, when you adjust those uh, longs, if you only have a one, if you only have one contract up there, like a one, two, one, if you have only have one upper long, and well, you have to move the entire thing. Uh, so the changes gets a little bit more difficult, or put it this way, the process of doing it is no more difficult. The, but the, the, the percentage of amount that you're, you're, you're 
doing is more. Okay, so when you move completely one, but if you had a 10 lot and you're only moving, let's say one or two, well, you're not, you know, you can only, you, you could potentially be changing your delta, maybe just a few, a few delta. Um, if you're trading uh, just a one contract, then you'd be, you know, it's like, you know, like switching like almost like 10 delta at a time. If you phase, if you look at the comparison to, to a 10 lot. So it's a, it's a little more difficult. Uh, you take on more risk because you're making more of a statement when you, when you do those rolls. Um, it can be done. The back testing that I did did not account for that account size. It is something that you can do, but the performance that I showed on the back testing was for doing a 10 lot. Okay. So just the people clear about that. Okay. And then there was another question. Uh, how did you pick 75 to 85 DTE? Uh, 75 to 85 was, again, it was taking a look at if, if, if the question is, is, is like, hey, if you take the $700, um, like the initial trade was to put on at 80 DTE. Um, but then after that, uh, that's for the initial trade. But then after that, uh, depending upon if I can get out of the trade early, then what I had found through backtesting, uh, and this is all part of the trade design uh, and what you find by, you know, literally doing this, you know, hundred, you know, <laughs> All, all the trades that were done over that 134 tr trades, uh, not just once, but multiple times, you tend to notice what's happening in the trades and you pick up on things. And those are the things that you pick up on when you're looking at doing a trade design. And so that's you know part of the work that I had done myself. But when I looked at and what I found was that there was a sweet spot between about 75 and 85, where if you were to take some profits, uh, then you then you were able to go and then jump back into the next cycle, whether that be a weekly, a quarterly, whatever, um, and be able to get more times up to bat. And that was a that was a really nice aspect of this trade where it really worked out uh, nicely. And compared to, let's say, just just normally putting on for 30 days and you get what you get after 30 days. Um, I wanted to be able to, if in fact the market was being good to us, and if the time frames were right. Um, you know, to be able to, to be able to utilize that. But those are, you know, th these are all things that I would go and look at, test something, then go back in and, you know, go through the 134 trades and say, okay, does that work out? I, I had plenty of other things that I tried and went through the process and it didn't work out. And I said, okay, well, it sounded like a good idea, but that didn't, it sounded great for maybe a, a few months or maybe six months. It worked out, wow, this is really doing great. Hey, maybe, I'll, maybe this is a great thing. And then it was like, okay, but you got to go in and do the work. And what I did, I went in and did the work. And when I came out after trying each one of these thoughts over the course of nine years, you find out what works over, over a long time period. Sure. Short term, can you go and use different things that can, if you have, you know, the knowledge of, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow or over the next few weeks? Sure. Could you improve the performance of these trades? Absolutely. Okay. There's no question. Just like I have been taught by many other people over the years, if you've got great technical analysis, if you've got the ability and you have the confidence to be able to go and do those things, um, there is no question that you can make significant improvements to all of these uh, profit percentages that I put up here. Um, and, you know, you can just look at other trades that other people are doing, you know, past mentors, past, you know, people uh, within the, within our community of people, we, we know who they are and, and what kind of trades can be done. Okay. Um, and there's significant amount that can be made above that. If you're are willing to take the risk or if you have the, ability to be able to, um, you know, have the ability to have, you know, great technical analysis and you can choose your times really, you know, specifically, those things can really, really help you out. And I would say, hey, you know, uh, a good friend of mine who you know, introduced me to options many years ago, um, he's got unbelievably great technical analysis and that's how he does his trading strictly. And, you know, he's able to make, you know, huge profits because of that. Um, but you've got to be able to have that ability. Uh, for myself, I never felt that I had that kind of technical ability to be able to go and predict by using all kinds of things of how you know the market would be doing. 
I looked and I was trained over the past 12 years uh, by, I think, really, really smart people, uh, people that we all know and have heard of over the years. And because of that, I've tried to take all of those learnings and over the past two and a half years, do the research on my own and take uh, my experiences that were, and you know, this is, this is no, you know, it's, it's not, you know, brain surgery in the sense where you're you know, with, with options that someone's coming up with a completely new and never seen before type, you know, type, you know, exact kind of thing. The reality is, Hey, we're trading puts and calls. Um, put it in whatever kind of a variation you want with a different kind of sets of rules around it, different filters, different things. And that's how you can kind of differentiate yourself. And more, more importantly, and, 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 you know, I can thank, you know, many of the mentors that I had before, you know, go and do the back testing. And if you don't want to go do the back testing, um, fine. You got a trade alert service here that someone has gone and done the work. Um, sure. There's a fee for using the service, but that's all part of the deal. You know, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're trying to take advantage of someone that has good experience that has, was willing to do the work and actually continues to do the research. I mean, trades that I'm doing now, I'm continuing to do research. As a matter of fact, I was looking at trying to make this announcement probably more than a month ago, and I've been doing more research just on kind of newer thoughts that I, I just, I just continually do that as, as a matter of my own process. And hopefully, you know, within some months down the road, I will have, you know, newer things that I'll be able to roll out to the group, uh, or to, I should say to the subscribers, that will be something that will be, you know, even better. And, but I think that's the, um, you know, it takes time to do those things. And I found out very quickly just over the past month that <laughs> it was taking more time than I thought. So um, I wanted to be able to at least get the, uh, the, the start of the, of the Dreamlifter that I had come up with and did all the work over the last nine years uh, as far as back testing and roll that out and get, get it into people's hands. And this way, um, and we'll continue to do the stuff, like I said, as Tom has up on the thing here, the, you know, versus, you know, trade messages and all the various, you know, kinds of um, uh, different opportunities that we, can, that we can get together to talk about this. So I look forward to that. And I've got know. a bunch more questions, Dave. Oh, okay, go, go for it. Okay, so how does this work in periods of low vol? Low volatility. Well, it, it, you know, it works fine. I mean, yeah, that, that's why I did the back testing during those years. I mean, you can see during those years of, um, you know, pick a, pick a time frame where it was in low volatility and look back on the slide that I had of, of those times of when it was low volatility. And, you know, we were getting very good performance through those times. Okay. Uh, next one from Dorian. Uh, is there a reason you prefer uh, RUT instead of SPX? Uh, yeah, uh, RUT, first off, um, uh, RUT was um, one thing I have traded probably 98%. It's what I learned on, okay? Uh, could this be used on SPX? Absolutely, okay? Um, can it be, will it have the exact same trade performance? I have no idea. That's something that you got to go back and do the back testing for. Um, everything that I developed was, uh, it was basically what I was comfortable with. And what I was able to, um, it's what I've traded for, I would say, you know, over 95% of my trading for, you know, the past 12 years. Okay. Um, let's see. What's a, a typical upside adjustment? Uh, you know, usually just adjusting the longs. You know, you're, you're basically just, it's not, you know, the, the longs are, you know, rolling up and down based upon, um, you know, just, if it's an upside adjustment, probably means that, you know, you need to reduce delta a little bit. So you just, you know, roll some, roll some longs down. Okay. Um, okay. David asked about the service. We, I think we mentioned that. And then the 75, the 85 DTE. Uh, Bill says, I think I remember that Tom used backwardation as a signal to get out of his broken wing butterflies. What's different in this approach that allows management through backwardation condition? Um, I'm not, what were, you, what were you using, Tom? Uh, I was using a contango of uh, 3% or less. Mm -hmm. It was kind of an early warning sign that things were heating up. Um, well, in this particular case, that's, you know, to go from contango into backwardation, you know, there's different points at which you could do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'd say it's, you know, in this particular case, I wanted to be able to see how the trades you could, you know, how they performed, you know, during that time frame. And, and also put 
a different rule set around a time frame because you can a you can like you did you could just get out right right or come up with a come up with a rule set to see if you can actually hang in there during those times because there were times that I found that were in backwardation that there's plenty of times to be able to make money were there times where it was under the initial stress was it hard yes but there were also times where let's say until you got back out of backwardation and back into contango there was a lot of time that you'd be basically out of the market and so i wanted to be in the market you know as, as far as i was concerned i'm a trader and i wanted to be able to you know i wanted to not just be you know sitting in the dugout i wanted to be in there trading and so right. i wanted to have something so that i could have to trade during these tougher times so i so that's how i came up with the different rule sets Okay, and then another question: If the market makes a constant move up, do you adjust the longs like you did on the downside? Uh, yes, but just do it in the opposite way. Okay. Uh, does your negative delta roll adjustment add capital to the campaign? Um, if you're if you're rolling if you're rolling longs up, okay, you'll be actually reducing capital in the trade. If you're rolling longs down, uh, you'll be adding capital into the trade. Okay, um, you see it, it can be done on a smaller account. Mm -hmm. um, is, is there an average number of adjustments that you make on a, a trade? Uh, you know, I didn't go back and actually count that. Um, I could go back and count that, and maybe um, you know, maybe in one, a future session we'll uh, we'll talk about that. But I, I, I did, actually didn't go back and check that. Okay, just a rough feel. What would you say, a one to three, something like that? I would say if we were in Contango, I would say the number of, I mean, just from my guesstimation, I would say for a 30 day trade, you would probably have, apart from putting the trade on and taking it off, okay? So in other words, in between those two, I would say, I would say probably four to five. Okay. okay. Um, let's see, another question. Uh, is it possible to do this with uh, ES futures options? I would guess yes. You just probably have to test it. Exactly. And any liquidity issues when you jump uh, with weekly rut? None. I've I've seen uh, for my. I mean, ever since weekly options started in 2014, I've been trading them, and I've I've never. I mean, obviously, it depends upon your if you're trying to trade. You know. Uh, uh, gazillions of dollars in there, uh, then there's a point at which you need to switch over to SPX. Um, but for certainly anything that I'm doing, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> and, yeah, I had a, and, had a guy in my trading group one time who was working for the third largest insurance company in Europe, and uh, his first iron condor trade was a thousand lot. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you're in the if you're in the mode, and I know there are people that that have you know organizations you know that are trading you know multi million dollar you know, trades and stuff like that. Uh, the advice that I remember I heard from multiple people is that, you know, if you if you're in the rut, if you're under, I I think what I had heard, and maybe you can ch chime in with this also, Tom, is I thought if you're under about five million dollars, uh, the liquidity in the rut is fine. Over that, you should be looking towards the SPX. That makes that's, sense. That's been that's been. I've never. <laughs> I wish I had the opportunity to to test that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I'm, I'm not in that category, as they say. I'm still, uh, uh, but someday I would love. Someday I'd love to have that uh, that issue to, re to 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 worry about. And Robin asked, uh, "This would be a good complement to the boxcar trade, which is shorter time frames or price for a dream lifter and a combo." So uh, I'll have to talk with Dave and Amy about that to see if they want to offer some kind of discount for like a you know buying both together. But at the moment you don't have that. But I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll ask Amy and talk to Dave about it and see what we can come up with. And I think that's the end of the questions, Dave. Cool, cool. Well, great. I know we want to try to keep it to an hour, so I think we pretty much kept it. So that's great. Yeah, we're pretty close. So I'd um, say, yeah. So I'd say, you know. Um, uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this for, for the community. I'm very anxious to get started. Like I said, I've been doing this for quite some time now, and I'd like to be able to, um, you know, if you uh, like to join in, we'd love to have you, and we'll be starting very soon, or just in a, well, for a couple, in a few days. Yeah, next Monday, right. You bet. All right, well, I'll uh, get this posted, send out an email, everybody remind them, and um, 
Yeah, if you want to uh, join Dave again, it's half off the first month, so uh, it's uh, not too big of an investment to uh, go see how the trade works and uh, ask Dave questions and uh, encourage you to give it a whirl. It looks like it's extremely well back tested and uh, the live results uh, validate that the back testing is uh, achievable. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, like I said, it's uh, there's you know there's different risk profiles for different people out there. And, you know, some people could look at this and say, hey, you know, you know, I only put on trades, you know, I do weekly trades and I put it on seven days before expiration and I run it right into expiration. If that's your, if that's what your trading is, well, then obviously this is not a trade for you. Or it could be it to be a, a complimentary trade for you if you want to be able to just have this in addition to other things that you have to complete a kind of, I would say, a, a more balanced risk profile of your various trades. So, you know, it all depends upon what your, uh, your goals are and how you set up. Um, and I guess one thing I also mentioned, Tom, that I, I don't think we mentioned was that, you know, as I have done personal one-on-one -on -one mentoring over the past five years, um, that also will be through Aramir for, for this, that will also be available. Right. So, so if you for, want extra handholding or have more deep detailed questions, you can uh, get some mentoring one-on-one, -on -one, which is that's great. Correct. That's correct. And so, and I'd be open to that. And like I said, I've, like, I've done that and helped people, many people over the course of the last five years. And so it's something that, you know, I do all the time. Um, so uh, for people that uh, want a little bit more, like I said, a little more one-on-one -on -one, and so that they don't have to, you know, ask questions through a group and like to review their own personal situations or try to devise some better kind of trading kind of opportunities, uh, possibly including this and other things, I'd be happy to help people with that. So, Fantastic. All right. Well, uh, Very good. I think that's it. So uh, thanks much, Dave, and everybody for sticking with us. I will uh, see you all next time. And uh, there's the link, uh, airmirror.com slash dreamlifter, if you want to give it a whirl. All right. Well, thanks, right. Tom, so much. Yep, you bet. Okay. See you, everyone. Yeah, bye-bye.